Hey y'all, today I am here with Becca Scott. Oh, hi. And we are talking about Mall Madness. Yes, it's uh, the best game from when I was 10. And we're also talking about a few other things that you're pretty passionate about. Uh, you mean like universal basic income? How did I that think happen? that's the one. Let's go shop. Let's go shop. Becca Scott, thanks for joining us. It is my great pleasure to be here. You are everywhere, literally everywhere. I look on the interwebs, there you are. I look in my kitchen, there you are. I, everywhere. You have good snacks. I do have good snacks sometimes. Uh, so, no, seriously, if viewers don't know Becca Scott, where are a few things they might have seen some of your work? Uh, my Instagram story, cuddling with my dog a lot. Um, I do stuff with Geek and Sundry primarily. Yeah. I have a show called How to Play and a show called Game the Game, where we first teach you how to play a game and then we game that game. It's true. <laughs> it's true. I have a podcast about games yes. called Victory Points. All right, so obviously you're doing all the things board game related now. This is correct. But where did Becca Scott start board gaming? Because, you know, everybody loves to know, like, obviously, this, this butte right here. Yeah. Yeah, beaut. So, you know, there's a lot of games that influenced me heavily. And what was the first game that wasn't because my dad always wanted to play Monopoly, it was because I loved this game and I knew I could crush everybody with my expert strategy. Oh, that is, baby. This is such an excellent game. Can I tell you? Yeah, let's can do I it. Can I do my spiel? Yeah, do your spiel. It's all about this electronic banking system. This sure. was cutting edge of technology in... 1990? Yeah, Ish. 1990. You tell it how many players you have, and it tells you there are two locations with a sale and one location with the clearance, and that'll change periodically every couple of turns. Right. You are shoppers in the mall. You choose one of four colors. That shopper comes with their very own credit card and a player board with holes for pegs. Now these represent the, the mall layout yeah. and represent each of the stores. Now obviously in each store there's only one purchasable item. For example, uh, what every teenager wants, in the kitchen store you can get dishes. <laughs> uh, in the card shop you can get a ceramic gift, maybe for grandma. The objective is to visit six stores, sure. pay the money to yep. get an item, and after you have six items or six pegs in your player board, you gotta get out to your personal parking garage exit. Yeah, and once you've done that, you win the game. And it seems like, well, what's the strategy here? You just, you're dictated how many moves you can make by the computer, but strategy comes in with the money management because obviously, Cash is infinite in this world of young white girls at the mall. Uh, <laughs> but uh, what you you have to go all the way up the stairs to the bank and get more cash out if you run out. So it's all about the economy of movement and being able to take advantage of the sales and clearances sure. in order to get the best price for the only one item you could buy at each store. This might yeah. be one of the first pickup and delivery games. Absolutely. That's right. There's not a, it's just mostly pick up. <laughs> right. It's accumulate but things. If, you, if you're like me and poor with your money, you're gonna be, you're gonna need to pick up. Yeah. And then deliver it. Yeah. It's funny, the consumerist culture of the 90s. Yeah. Cause that was a thing. Yeah. And this, this came at a time, my favorite TV show was Saved by the Bell. Yep. My favorite movie was Clueless. Yep. And my favorite game was Small Madness. Yep. And it's all about consumption and this color palette. <laughs> And, and you Kelly Kapowski. Joy. Zach's the worst. He's a real, the original misogynist, but the at OG. the time, <laughs> Zach Morris. Oh, yeah. You know? yeah. And now, Kelly Kapowski. Yeah. <laughs> no. I may have had that poster on my wall as a teenager. Yeah, that was a good poster. That was a really good poster. <laughs> you know, my copy of Mo Madness is gone forever. What happened? Well, you know, naturally it would sit in my parents' basement until I come visit it at Christmas sure, and sure, maybe sure. we play it. Um, but my little sister, who I love very much, she's just a couple years younger than me, she brought it to her college apartment. And I remember we played when she graduated college oh, when nice. she was 22. So I was 26 and it was great, we loved it. We had a great time. We were in this like little halfway in the basement apartment getting super st stoned playing Mall Madness. <laughs> It's California, we can say that. Yeah. Uh, 
her apartment, her her old roommates had held onto the game and she was gonna come get it. Yeah. And they got evicted. And all of the communal stuff, she had like kept her clothes at her significant other's house, but like the game is just, it was trashed. It's just somewhere. I hope that that horrible landlord that evicted them kept my madness for himself. Yeah. Even though, and maybe it brought a little joy into his heartless life. R.I.P. <laughs> Real quick before we continue, we are looking for your support. Check out the game below. It's our weekly game recommendation, very similar to an updated version of Mall Madness, Last Wheel. So click the link below, check out that game, and help us continue our storytelling about board games changing lives. Do it, you gotta do it, click. So Becky, you had a friend who has a theory on how to upgrade your little humans if you have those. Oh, like for children. Yeah, well, the offspring. I remember in college, uh, my friend James, and he was like, did you play board games as a kid? I have a theory. I was like, yeah, duh, I crush it, Monopoly, no big deal. <laughs> and uh, he was like, I have this theory that like anybody who's smart or like intuitive and strategic on a different level, like I could probably point to the people in this room that played board games as a kid. And it's funny now because our entire community is these people. Like, right. yeah, we love nerds and right. we nerds game as kids. Uh, and that's why we're obsessed with strategy and like, yep. Yep. optimization. Uh, but in theater school, not everybody games, and in the world, not everybody games. It's upsetting to hear. Yeah. I know. We're working on that. Yeah, but uh, so we had this theory about like who was a board game kid. It's funny that you say that though, because even Parker, uh, he went to the school back in Alabama, and the teacher knew us and followed me on the Instagrams and the socials, mm. and she was just like, "Hey." Parker's one of the best problem solvers in the class, and I'm pretty sure it's because of all the board games that you play with. Absolutely. Him. And then she asked, would you come in and like teach the class some board games? And I was like, yeah, duh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you? Oh, yeah. Okay, mm, cool. So you're gonna be like, yeah, yeah, I said I'd go, and then I moved actually, to Los yeah, Angeles. Actually, yeah, actually, I think you're right. <laughs> actually, no, I don't think I actually, I think I said I would, and then I never. Got her around. That's not the Good. same. You gotta follow through, James. Sorry, Miss White. I owe you a uh, board gaming class. Miss Wyatt, you heard it here. So can we play? <laughs> no, I don't want to play this with you. <laughs> You're gonna just dominate. You know, it's really up to the bank whether or not I dominate because it tells me how many spaces I can move. It's true. It's true. Just like in real life, how much money you can actually have. Yeah. <laughs> So in this game, each of us was given $200 to start. Right. Why aren't we given that as citizens of the United States of America? The greatest country in the world. The greatest country in the world. Right. A big thing that I'm very interested in as a concept of the world moving forward into the future uh -huh. is the idea of universal basic income. Okay. But, get, but hear me out, hear me out. So this is the what? idea. What? I pulled myself up by my bootstraps and everybody else should have to do it too. Mm -hmm. Did you though? Because I, I know no. I was born into this world, so there were no bootstraps involved. I and do that remember me get where I am. several times when I had to ask for help and help was there to give, be given to me. Absolutely. And a lot of people are not given that help. So why what do you don't mean? we... What do you mean they don't have help? <laughs> there are poor people in the world what? that don't have a mommy and daddy that puts money in the bank in the middle of the mall for them. <laughs> what we need is to solve poverty and homelessness sure. for everyone because we have such a prosperous society. Why is it not possible for us to just get people off the street, get people fed, sure. get people not dying on sure. our watch because it is our job as the richest country ever to make sure that people don't die from poverty. Sure. And that's my two cents on well, it. Well, I lived in a place for five years where I got to walk with people who who didn't have, that, they're right. marginalized, right? And and they didn't have that. And you you don't understand, I, I knew I had my perceptions of people going into that, that stint of our life, right? And when you walk with people and you're like, okay, well, uh, I'm gonna use a I'm gonna use a fake name to protect identities here. Um, like James Shauna, Jackson? let's say Shauna. She has two kids and she's really trying to get out of the housing area. And she has a job and she's been working it for quite a while. But her car breaks down. Well, she doesn't have the money to fix the car, right? Because she spends all the money. She has to use all the money that she has, right? And so she loses her job because she can't go to it. Well, you, some people just say, well, why didn't she just get her car fixed? And why don't she just use her credit card to fix the car? She doesn't have a credit card. You don't have one of these. Don't have one of those. Well, why don't she ask some, a family member to loan her the money? She doesn't have anybody that has the money. 
So when you literally don't have the option, I know many times I'd be like, hey, I need this, and I'd go ask my grandfather. Or I would go ask someone, a friend, even a friend who had money, who had access. And if you don't have those options, you literally hit a brick wall and everything is crushed. All, any money that she had saved up, anything that she was working on is now over. And also when she goes to her next job, she was fired from her previous job because she couldn't make it anymore. So who's gonna wanna so hire? So it just keeps going when you're in that cycle and you can't get out. Absolutely. But if you had basic income, right, and you had enough money to like fix a simple car thing, like those little simple things totally derail people Absolutely. that are trying to climb out of poverty. So if you're working at uh, Coneheads ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, making seven twenty-five an hour, which is the national minimum wage right now. Right. That's not enough to pay your rent in most places. No. The government is paying for that person to maybe have food stamps or maybe have mm -hmm. some housing assistance, and we're already paying for that person in taxes because Coneheads doesn't want to. Right. So if we tax a corporation like Coneheads a little bit more, because everybody loves ice cream and everybody's buying ice cream, right? And they will continue to do so. That worker, if they have a basic income, sure, then they have bargaining power. It's the exact same things that unions have done. If I don't have to take the job because the job is very bad, then you have to make the job better to make me come work. Because sure. I want more additional spending cash. I want to be able to go to Yuppie Puppies Pets. You know? <laughs> we could so easily raise up so many people with just doing what Mall Madness and Monopoly have been doing for decades. Okay, so I really think, and obviously I, can't, I come from a conservative area of the country. This is true. So I can already hear the arguments against that. Like, yeah. what, like well, why would you take money from someone who earned it? I think the resistance is, the resistance that's always there of, well, taxes means that I, my hardworking money goes away. There is so much excessive wealth for a very small percentage of people right. that is very, very popular that sure. that amount of wealth is taxed. Because we have such a prosperous society, mm -hmm. why is it not possible for us to just get people off the street, get people fed, sure. get people not dying on sure. our watch because it is our job as the richest country ever to make sure that people don't die from poverty. Sure. And a lot of times the argument you hear is, well, I think people are lazy and so they wouldn't work. Well, maybe there's a small percentage, but most people, enough money to cover just your rent right. and just some basic food you right. can't eat out, but you could have some groceries for the month. Sure. That's not enough for people. People want more. It wrap that all in a nice little bow. I think one of the things that's really interesting in a lot of games that have currency, right, mm -hmm. is you have a starting order, and whoever is first gets a set amount of money. Mm -hmm. Whoever's second, third, fourth, they get a different amount of money. Absolutely. Typically, it's higher. Yeah. You get more. Well, you know, first player advantage means that you have to give more money to the people coming later. <gasps> Or games are so political. They're so progressive. <laughs> They're so liberal. Who knew? No, but I mean, you, that's in. No one blinks an eye when you're doing a simulation of being efficient with currency. Absolutely. Well, it's all about a, a fair starting playing field, leveling that. You want the game field. to be balanced. Mm -hmm. You gotta balance the game. You gotta balance the no game. It's no fun to win if you already were cheating. Are we just talking about balancing the game? We're talking about game balance. The yeah, game of absolutely. life. Absolutely. Now, my madness is a kind of balanced game. <laughs> you believe in the inherent power of the electronic banking system. <laughs> Becca, if somebody wants to follow you, they, they're, they're digging the Becca Scott, where are the places on the social medias that they could follow you? I'm at the Becca Scott on everything. Okay. Done. Well, I tell you what, why don't you, uh, why don't we play a couple rounds of this and let me dominate. Okay. Get good, noob. Let's do this. Well, we're going to have to start in our respective parking uh, lots. Well, I'm red. Red player. Okay. Well, you got to start in your red parking lot.